This is going to be part two of the tutorial series where we are creating a brick breaker game using Unity Bolt. If you missed the first part, make sure you check it out in the previous video. Also, before we get started, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Now that we have the basics of our game, let's start working on the bricks. So to do that, we're going to go to art, grab the green brick, drop it here, call this regular brick. What we're going to do with this, let's just position it zero, 0, for now. We want to add a collider, so again we're going to do box collider to detect when the ball hits this brick. We're going to create a new machine for the brick. So let's go to Bolt, Flow Machines, call this brick. Okay, so we don't need any of this. We're going to add a variable here that's going to be called, sorry, let's call this health. You're going to see why in a minute. And we're going to actually start this in one. So this is how many hits the brick needs to take. So if we go back to our flow, our chart, we're going to create an on trigger, sorry, on collision, enter, 2D. So every time something hits hits us, it's only going to be the ball, so we don't need to actually check for a tag. So what we're going to do is to actually set variable, so we're going to change the health variable. We're going to decrease it by one. So to decrease it by one, we actually need to first get it, so get variable. So we get the current health, we add minus one so add minus one and this is what we're going to actually set as our health so if we have one and the ball hits us we take that one we subtract one we're at zero and that's what we set our health and now we check so let's do a branch what do we check here if our health it's higher or it's less or equal to one so we can actually position here a little bit do this so we can actually do, use this one as well so we're going to do less or equal we're going to check if our health is less or equals to zero this is one of what we're going to use in our branch and if this is true we're going to destroy we're going to call destroy okay and the object needs to be ourselves so we're going to go call game object Sorry, game object, and this is get, game object get, perfect. So, we start with one health, the ball collides with us, we take that one, we subtract one, so we're, we're at zero, and then we check. If that health is less or equals to zero, we destroy a game object and we destroy ourselves, so the brick. So let's make sure that this works. Yep, that worked perfect. Great. So we're, we're going to actually use a concept called prefabs. So what we're going to do is create a new folder, prefabs. This is going to let this is going to let us uh, reutilize our bricks. So let's just drag and drop it here. That's all we need to do for now. We're going to duplicate this, and we're going to call this strong brick. Move it to the side. And we're going to change the color, so we're going to use the purple one. So what we want to do here is we want to start with this brick. It will have two health. And when it gets hit the first time, it will change this like broken sprite. And then if you hit it again, it will disappear. So to do that, first of all, we, get, we need to change the health. So this is going to be two. Okay. And now in the chart, we need to do something a little bit different. We're going to use this as a base, but we, we're going to change some things. So we have to, we have this case that when it's less or equals to zero, it gets destroyed. That's correct. So we're going to move this here. But what if it isn't? This means that the health is still above zero. So what we're going to do here is actually branch. We're going to do sprite renderer. Sprite renderer. We're going to call that sprite 
So let's go to Sprite Set. And we actually need to set a Sprite to it. So we're going to create a new variable in the object as well. We'll call it Broken Sprite. Maybe you have Type Sprite. Okay. And this is the, the Sprite that we're going to set here. So let's get variable from object broken sprite okay so now all we need to do in the strong brick is to actually set this sprite so let's write again here and then we're going to choose our broken sprite make sure, make sure you save everything once in a while because vault tends to lose some reference okay so let's try this out Yep, the first time it gets broken, the broken image, and then the second time we hit it, we should break it. Perfect. Okay, now that we have our two types of bricks, we're going to actually delete the, them from here, because we already have the prefabs. But we're going to actually create, so create empty, we're going to call this game manager. So this is going to actually create our layout of bricks. So let's create a bolt flow machine. Call this layout creator. Okay. Underscore there. Okay. And now let's edit this graph. Okay, so here what we want to do is to have two variables. So we're gonna add a width gonna be an int and a height gonna be an int as well so it's how many bricks we want across so let's say five so it's gonna be one two three point four five and then how many rows do we want so it's gonna be two so it's gonna be ten in total so for for, for now let's put five and two okay so what we want to do is when we start so at the beginning of of the game we want to Go do a for loop. So let's go let's call for. For loop. Perfect. So it starts at zero. And we wanted to do it as many times as the width. So let's get variable. Object. Width. So it will go from zero to width. So we'll go zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So then we also want to do another four. So, copy and paste it. So this is going to hook from the body. Now this one should be from iterate through the height. Okay, so same thing from zero to height. And what we want to do is to instantiate. So game object instantiate. Okay, perfect. The brick so let's add here for now a tile sorry brick it's gonna be a game object so the prefab that we're going to use is get variable object brick and the parent we want it to be the child of this game object so we're actually going to do a game object get self Okay, let's see how this works out. So we have 5, 2, and brick. We're going to actually put the regular brick for now. Okay, let's see what happens. We can see the bricks are getting instantiated, but they're all in the same position because we're not positioning them, positioning them correctly. So let's do that now. Open up the flow chart again. Go to flow, uh, full screen. So after we instantiate it, we want to actually set the local position. So local position set. Okay. We want to set the position of this object, the one we just instantiated. And the position is going to be, we're going to create a new vector 3. Or vector 2 actually so to be able to be rows and columns we need to do a little bit of 
math here. So we need to actually take the index of the width. We're going to multiply it. I'm going to do 4.5 here. It's just a separation. You can play with these values as you want. This is going to be the X. And then the Y is going to be this index. Multiply by 2. And we're going to hook this here. So let's see how this looks now. Okay, that looks good. Now we just need to play around where, where we want this to be. So let's... For it to show, we need to set it to zero and position it. So let's do minus nine, 15, zero. Let's remove play. So minus nine, 15, zero. So we press play now. Yep, we can see our bricks and we can actually play this and they will be destroyed one at a time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, for our level, we don't want all of the bricks to be the same. So let's change that right now. So instead of having only one brick, we're going to remove this variable. We're going to add bricks. And this is going to be a list of game objects. Okay. And we're going to have as many values as we need. So if we have 5 times 2, we need... 10 bricks here, so 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, that's correct. And so we're, we're going to assign these bricks. So we're going to have two regulars, wrong one, three regulars. And then the top part is going to be strong one. So, now if we go back to our flowchart for the game manager, this, this is not a single brick, so we need to actually figure out which prefab we want to instantiate in this position. So we're going to actually get rid of this. This is going to be bricks now. And this is a list. So we actually need to do a get item from the list, I want to tell the index of that item. So to get the correct one, we need to actually take the width. We're going to multiply it by the index that we have in the for loop. So this will tell us, tell us which row we're currently in. And then we have just have to add. Sorry, this is, this is not connected to this one. Sorry, it's connected to this one. To the height and then we add so just add the width the, the current value of the width and this is going to give us our index and this value is the one we're going to instantiate so it seems a little bit complicated but let's check it out And yep, we can see now we have the first one is a regular brick, regular brick, strong, regular, 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 and four strong ones. So now we can actually change this however we want. So let's say the last one we want regular. If we press play, we can have our custom level created on the fly. And if we have more types of bricks, we can just replace this and it will work on its own. This is going to be it for the second part of this tutorial. As always, if you like the video or have any questions, leave a comment below and consider subscribing. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.